Let it fly. Take one. What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of Let It Fly. I'm your co-host, Jared Dillinger. I'm with my other co-host, Saul Mercado. And we have a special guest for you guys today. He needs no introduction. This man has played all over the world, whether that's Mexico, Italy, France, the States. I could go on. He's won six championships with the Philippines, a couple more with Lebanon and the ABL. He's won multiple, multiple best imports. He is even regarded as the best import to ever play out here in the Philippines. He's a father of three, and of course, he's from our squad, the Philippine squad, Barangay Henebro. Oh, and not to mention, I forgot, he just got recently naturalized to our Philippine team. He plays for Gilas Filipinas, the man, the myth, the legend, Justin Brownlee. Yo, thanks for having me. What's man, up, that was a long list <laughs> yeah, of yeah. rewards, man. <laughs> hey, I told you to go be like, yo, yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, that's not what, what we have on this episode, uh, what we have on this yeah. show is for all our guests, you have a safe word, right? So whatever that safe word is, we will move on to the next subject. Okay. All right. So okay. what, let us know what your safe word is. Fade away. Fade away? Fade away? Fade away? All right. All right. Okay. Cool. So, okay. No, we can talk about it. Though. We can okay. talk about that. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, Justin, man, thank you. First and foremost, thank you for being mm -hmm. here. Um, you know, we were always clowning even before you got here. Justin, people don't know this, but he has a tendency. Um, when he's supposed to come back to play, you know, he often misses his flight. <laughs> misses his flight. <laughs> and Coach Tim gets livid. <laughs> so we were like, yo, he might miss the flight to let it fly. <laughs> but no, man, thank you for being here um, again. We want to start from the beginning, man. Let us know how you how you uh, heard about the Philippines. What was your first initial thoughts from playing, you know, in France and, and all over before you got here? You know, what, what was your first initial thoughts when you got that call to come to the Philippines and how that happened? Rest in peace, my agent or former agent, Cheryl Reyes. Yeah, man. Um, uh, yeah, she just hit me up out of the blue. Um, I heard about the Philippines first from Paul Harris. So uh, we was in the D-League, um, 2011. Um, he played with um, Talking Text, right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. And he won a championship. That was his teammate. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's so, right. yeah, he won a championship. And, uh, man, he was just coming back, you know, telling me so many great things and um, how the people love basketball. You know, uh, fans come to the game and really support. And, uh, man, I just kind of just was, you know, a little interested after that. But I didn't really put a lot of thought you know, into it about like trying to push to go. But uh, uh, 2016, Cheryl, she called me and I was just, uh, at the time, I think I was in Vegas, um, really just trying to work out, trying to uh, get on summer league, just trying to, you know, just, you know, being out there in the basketball world, you know, but um, she called me and man, it was it, a first offer it was a different team in the PBA. Oh, wow. Um, what, never team, knew that. what team was that? Uh, I didn't know about this. I don't want to get it wrong, but yeah. I think it was either Phoenix or La maybe a La I'm not sure. Maybe Phoenix. I think it was I don't Phoenix. think Phoenix was in the league at that time. Or it wasn't? They were, they were a different name. I'm not sure what it was. But if they offered you, cool. They were okay, in maybe the somebody. Yeah. I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> somebody like that, though. But uh, it was uh, – I had turned it down. Um, I had an offer in – Europe at the time as well on the table and um the way those two contracts it was it was better if I was to decline and then just look at Europe and then like a week later or maybe even a few days um she messaged me back and I think it was probably when Paul Paul broke his he finger broke his yeah. finger yeah so, I think that's the interesting part that I think I I want to ask you about this because for those who don't know Paul Harris he was on Hanebra before Justin got here Mm -hmm. And so when Paul Harris got hurt, that's kind of how Justin got to come in. Can you kind of take us back to that, you know, you had to come in as a replacement and just now you're going to be put on this team and you got put in this situation. Did you know too much about 
Nebra and the, the, the whole team in itself, how important they are to the country? Like, what was your first experience with that, getting on the team? Not really difficult, but I didn't, I mean, I didn't know what to expect. And just coming in was like, I didn't expect it to be what it was for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, Paul had told me about it in 2011, but I was just like, I was just, because I only signed for a month, okay. you know, originally. Because uh, Paul, I think mm -hmm. he's injured for months. He thought he was right going to come back. It was a hand, right? The finger, yeah. Finger, yep. So, yeah, I didn't know really what to think. Um, and I, when I came, um, I didn't even know how to pronounce the team. I was saying, uh, with a G, yeah, Ginebra. Yeah, yeah. Ginebra. Yeah. Ginebra yeah. And um, people was asking me, oh, you play for Ginebra? And I was mm -hmm. like, uh, who? And then I would say San Miguel, because San Miguel was on mm -hmm. our jerseys as well. And, um, you know, uh, uh, for sure, you know, that first game, um, you know, we played, and you know, uh, it was Alaska. Alaska wasn't really a sold out crowd, but you could just feel the energy. Yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, I felt it from the fans. And from that moment on, you know, after the game, I got a lot of support, even though <laughs> I had the cramps. Cramped up. You know, uh, did you, did you, you know, shoot bad that game? Because coach, I think Coach Tim nah, talks about this one. No, no, no. What a funny story is, and a lot of people know this story. I think we had told it um, to to one of the reporters or something like that. Me and Joe. When he first, his first practice, me and Joe were like, yeah. we're in trouble. This boy is what trash. What happened? You just couldn't hit a We gym? were like, no, dog, he couldn't get through, he couldn't get through like 30 minutes of practice. Right? First off, first off, it was like, you could tell he would, you know, he just got off the plane, yeah. which is, which is, which is crazy because a lot of people account. expect these imports to come out here yeah. and just kill right away, yeah, right? Yeah. And dominate. They coming just off the flight. Like this ain't, it's a whole different time zone. So they yeah, coming yeah. out here, whole different time zone. But he was like garbage, bro. I mean, like <laughs> you could, you were, you were, cause you know, you can see like potential. You can like, see it. Man, yeah. you got okay. talent, like whatever, like, man, you could tell like he just, he just off rhythm. Yeah. He was trash, bro. And <laughs> yeah. then he started well, cramping up, couldn't get through the practice. And we're like, like, oh man, this oh guy my God, he ain't going to make it past the first quarter, bro. <laughs> Yo, me <laughs> and Joe so cool. were like, Paul, how long you going to be out, bro? <laughs> like, we got host to win this championship. Hey, Paul, come on, man. We got break this eight year drought. And then dog against Alaska, turn up mode. He yeah. just turned into a Justin. Yeah, Justin. He turned into JB. He turned we're into like, JB, basically. Who is this yeah. dude? We were like, yo, who is this? Me and Joe were like, let's go. <laughs> They're how Joe goes like, oh, we nice again, dude. <laughs> yeah, and then he, he starts to take credit. I knew it the whole time. I knew it the whole never time. Never had a doubt. Never, never had a doubt. doubted him. Yeah, right. <laughs> Joe, you're weak, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yeah, man, I mean, did it match your expectations of, of when you first came out here? The level of competition you had played in Europe. Like you said, you had played in the G League. When you came out here, your expectations coming to Asia. This was your first time coming to Asia, right? Yeah. Yeah. So your first time coming to Asia, did you think like, oh, yeah, it was going to be easy? How did you How did you level the competition? Um, I didn't expect it to be uh, as high of skill level as it is. Um, I think the Philippine basketball, the skill set is very high. You know, yeah, um, facts. The skill level. I, yeah. I think that's one big thing, you know, playing in Europe, wherever I played at, you know, compared to the Philippines, the skills are there. You know, you got guys who can do dribble moves, step backs, and, mm -hmm. you know, all the, all the stuff. Um, uh, yes, um, may not be as, uh, as tall or as physically, you know, gifted as, you know, maybe other countries or, or races, but, you know, for, as far as the skill, I, didn't, I did not expect, you know, guys to be crossing me up. I remember, you know, coming in and, I was more so a big man at the time, mm -hmm. you know, and, and guys yeah, would come off four. and, you know, really, you know, either cross me up or, you know, drive past me, do a quick move, drive past me. And it was hard to deal with at first, you know. Um, but uh, I got used to it and, you know, um, but the expectation definitely surprised me with that, though. Yeah, you, yep. mentioned, you mentioned when you first got out here, you were a power forward. Like yep. you were a little heavier. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a testament to the work you put in and your game. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you were already nice, and then your game just kept getting better. Every time you came back, me, Joe, Coach Tim, all the guys were like, damn, he got better and better. He just keep getting better and better. And you were you were leveling all of us up. And I saw firsthand. JD has seen it firsthand, too. We've been teammates with you. Both the sides. work that you put in, bro, yeah. the work that you put in, before practice, me and you would get shots up. After practice, we would get shots up. You were always working. But a testament to you, man, not just how good, how, how much better you got and evolved for the league, but what everyone talks about with you is how great of a teammate you are, bro. 
Like, has that been something that you've always been in college? Or was it like, yo, when I go out there, I'm going to be the best teammate? Is it something that you've always had your whole entire life? I just try to just always play the game the right way. And, um, <clears throat> you know, um, I guess figuring it out at a young age, like, you really got to be, um, you really got to depend on your teammates yeah. if you want to win. You know, you could go out there and look good. You know, I had a teacher when I was younger, and she, uh, I think I was like in the third or fourth grade, you know, she used to call me a showboat, you know? And <laughs> the crazy thing is, is I used to come out, and I used to like send my teammates up, like behind the back passes. Like I used to do like Harlem Globetrotters, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that, or and one, you know, when that came out. So I used to try those moves, mm. but instead of just shaking somebody, I would drive past and just, you know, do one of those passes that she used to call me a showboat. I was like, man, I ain't trying to showboat. I just like hooking my teammates yeah, up, yeah. you know, but, uh, just overall, I just, you know, enjoy, you know, uh, getting assists, uh, even helping somebody out, you know, in the game or practice or whatever situation it could be, man, for real. Dude, that's dope, Justin. I kind of want to play off of what you're just saying about showboating. I mean, just kind of reminds me of like Showtime. And I want to ask, like, how did you get your name, your nickname, Magic? Like, how did that oh, yeah. come about, bro? That was, I mean, I, I used to, uh, I came, grew up after magic basically it's okay. prime in the 80s and stuff so um i didn't get to watch them live mm -hmm. um obviously but just growing up and hearing about them um hearing stories a six nine point guard you know is always like dribbling and you know passing so that was somebody that i really <clears throat> you know uh idolized and really wanted to be like you know at first um just just the way he played the game you know it was just beautiful you know, you see, you see highlights all the time. You wanted, you, to, you, you wanted to pass. Magic. You wanted to pass like him. Is that what you were saying? I, I wanted. I wish I could. I didn't know passing <laughs> JD going the same sentence. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not magic, but you know, you more MJ, I, dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Here we go. Now I tell people all the time, like, like from besides your first year when you was a power forward and your game evolved, like I could see your influences of Kobe. Yeah. We always talk about MJ. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We could see, like, your influences. And it's, like, real life. Like, out here, you are the Michael Jordan of <laughs> oh, yeah, this really. league, bro. Facts. Like, hands down. Like, people that are around you, when you step into an arena, when you're on the court, I guarantee you, like, all the other players look at you like, wow. Like, there's this, there's this aura about yeah. you that's, like, Michael that people would always talk about when they're on the court. It, usually, imports that come out here, the opposing team would try and dirty him up getting in their head yeah. and all that you've always had like that even kill like mm -hmm. mentality like just you were never too high never too low you were just always worried about winning like is that would you say that you like magic but then you emulated your game after kobe and, and michael yeah for sure i mean um it started off magic but uh as i got older um you know of course in the 90s michael jordan everybody you know know what he done and um, Kobe, too, you know, after, you know, it was like, man, we got Michael, and then, man, we got Kobe. It was like yeah. back to back, you know, and then your boy LeBron came. Well, that's later <laughs> on, you know, whatever. Why are you feeling like that? <laughs> I mean, not then he came. Like, he took he over the uh, <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh, but those guys basically came, you know, um, and were in the league in their primes, you know, when we was growing into basketball. So um, I just really enjoy how those guys played. And like you said, they was always – like even kill, always ready to you know kill and you know just always focus on winning and championships and you know you could throw a lot of things at those guys but they always seem to you know get to that point where they can overcome it. So yeah, like that's that. that's a hell of a peg that you can compare yourself to. Like me and Saul, we got like I don't know. Maybe Trevor Ariza and uh, oh, Raymond. Like You're I'm like, like Raymond Felton. I'm like LeBron. You're like Raymond or Khalid El Amin. Remember that dude? Remember that, remember that big dude? Khalid El Amin from yeah. Africa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I said someone, Adam Morrison. Hey, someone, someone put that up. Man, Khalid, Khalid El Amin. Look, we got Adam Morrison. Adam Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> he got the bag as a bug. Hey, man, he's cool, oh, man. man. He's cool as hell. Yeah, MJ oh, drafted him. So huh? that, you got that going for you. I, oh, I'm not him, bro. I'm not yeah, Barnes. I'm not Barnes. Barnes. Okay. <laughs> Long hair. <laughs> nah, so um, you've played for one coach your entire time out here. You, you the resident, mm -hmm. can never import. Um, what would you say about your coach? Like, what makes Coach yeah. Tim so special? Why is he 
the winningest all-time coach out here. What separates him um, from any other coach that you've had um, playing overseas or, you know, in college or anything like that? Man, it's a lot, yeah. it's a lot of things, to be honest. He's but special, uh, man. man. Uh, just for a few things, uh, you know, he really pays attention to details. Um, he enjoys teaching the game, like, constantly. Mm -hmm. Just And he does it with a passion, you yeah. know. And um, his competitiveness is just, I mean, we could be in a tune-up game, and I don't see him get to a point where it seemed wow. like we're in the finals. Yeah. Like, nah, man. Like we that. all got stories, man. Yeah. Flipping yeah. tables or busting doors. <laughs> man. <laughs> Remember when he goes into the bathroom and he freaks out in the bathroom? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, coach. I love that. <laughs> it's something special, though, yeah. man, because, you know, uh, you, don't, you don't see that often, you know, from a coach standpoint, you know. Um, but, you know, just being able to play under him, you know, it's just, like I said, it's something special. And, you know, um, it's just always – it don't matter if you're the, the best guy on the team or, you know, not to say the worst guy, but – I'm gonna say the 12th guy or yeah. you know the 15th guy. Um, he's he's gonna be coaching you as hard as he possibly can. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, you gotta respect that. You gotta respect that. Would you say um, because Coach Tim, he's known for having these resident imports, right? Would you say that he was really like he gave you that comfortability to be like, yo, he's gonna be patient with me and let me involve into what I am, or I had that pressure to perform right away. I had to. I had to win games and perform right away because that's what a lot of imports that come out here, they have that pressure to win right away or else they're on a two, three game losing streak, they gone. Yep, yep. But Coach Tim has been known to stick with his imports and then, then becoming resident imports. Yeah. I mean, it's a blessing for me to be, been able, be able to be uh, in that position, you know, to come in under Coach Tim who's patient with you, who, you know, um, who will give you time. And um, right away coming in, you know, I felt pressure to win because uh, I understood the situation. And after one or two games, I understood how big I never meant, you know. So I did feel the pressure at the beginning. But like you said, after time, you know, uh, especially after we won our first year, um, I definitely felt, you know, um, the trust. You know, I got more comfortable. And then I just... It allowed me to grow a whole lot, a ton, man, just being able to get that comfortable and just knowing that, you know, the team, the guys like me, mm -hmm. the coaching staff, you know, all the way up to the management and bosses. And it just felt good to come to work every day, come to practice in that type of environment. Yeah, so it's enjoyable. That was a big help. Jay, can, can you take us back to that first year? You know, take us back on that first, that first championship, you know, where mm -hmm. everyone talks about the shot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your vibes, the perspective going into that. Because y'all were on Hanebra, obviously. I was on the other side. Yeah. I was on Morocco when that happened. So I had a totally different perspective. But why don't you take us a little bit about that first chip, you know, leading up to the finals and the shot and how that kind of happened. Talk about how easy it was to bust his ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's going to be oh, another man. episode. <laughs> Did you play that first year? No, that's when I, I tore my hamstring okay, in the okay. semis. Okay, I remember yep. that. Okay, yeah. Fourth quarter. But yeah, man, that was that was an amazing experience. I gotta say, you know, uh, I feel sorry, but uh, <laughs> it's cool, talking man. about it, uh, but it was amazing, man. Um, we we definitely, uh, I feel like we were the underdogs for not maybe that particular series, but I want to say the semis we going through, semis, yeah, yeah. going guys, through. We, where'd you finish? You're like I, I want to say like, like four to six, or something like that. Right? Yeah. yeah, you yeah. weren't a top standing. No, we weren't yeah. a top seed, That's yeah. Right. So I felt like we definitely wasn't expected to win. And then um, I remember playing San Miguel, that, that semis. And we were like, whoa, I don't know how we going to, you know, really get past this one. But, you know, just trusting in the guys, trusting in the whole process throughout the whole conference. And um, Coach Tim, you know, he, he definitely, you know, always come up with great game plans. and Well, not always, sometimes, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, Coach. No, I'm playing Coach. I'm playing Coach. Hey, hey you um, got to talk about Coach having his crew. Coach, Coach Tim, Coach you know, Richard, yeah, Coach Richard, oh, yeah. Coach, o. Coach Kirk, Coach Kirk, Big Olds, Facts. Coach Frank, Coach Frank, Freddie, Freddie, yep. Coach Freddie. I mean, like you said, like he don't always come up with ga great game plans, but as a group, it's always winning. It's, it's always the about level, the team. Man. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that now, and the, the coaching staff, the whole coaching staff, like it's it's top level. You know, uh, 
Coach Kurt, you know, he's always having the guys riled up, you know, um, before and after practice, if you want to get some of it after practice. And, yeah, that's you know, my guy. Coach Richard, Coach O, you know, Coach uh, Freddie, who's – he, he just, was leaving. He just bounced, man. Just, yeah, he just left, man. Had his last game. Oh, really? Where did yeah. he go? States. Just next chapter. Oh, next wow. Next chapter. Yep. Man, yep. that was that was. I wish I could. I ain't really have a proper way, uh, proper goodbye with him, man. But yeah, he left for the states, and then mm-hmm. just everybody, man. I would say sorry, it, sorry, to cut you off, bro. But yeah, back to that shot, man. But oh, okay, my with <laughs> with people having a phones out, bro. That get when I went to go take the ball out. It gave me goosebumps, oh, bro. Yeah. Like everyone had their light on and their phone. Like if there's a picture of this, I'm sure there's a picture there's everywhere. Many I've seen it. There's, yeah. It's it's unreal. You won't see that anywhere else in the world. It was like everybody knew. Yeah. You were something about to was something happen. about the special was about to happen, yeah. and we were going against you know an eight year drought and never has never haven't hasn't won. And so, talk about that moment. Did you did you notice the lights? I did for a quick second. Like, you know, it was just coming out. I'm thinking about the play. I'm trying to figure out, like, just thinking, like, if he do deny me, maybe I can backdoor and have it. You know what I mean? I was thinking about certain scenarios in the play. And then I remember getting to my spot on the court, and I kind of looked, and I was like, oh, like, man, it's, this is so. hopefully something special about it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know? But uh, it was just shocking, and... Uh, I got, you know, the butterflies definitely came, but uh, after the ball was in and uh, we ran to play, I came and made the shot. I, I don't, I blinked, I kind of blinked out, but I remember you came behind me and grabbed Grab me. You. <laughs> did, was, you, did you expect him to foul you? Because he was supposed to foul, right? They were supposed yeah. to foul, he yeah. Ju- but he just dropped off on, on him a little bit. And, and then that was it. That's yeah, all he needed. he dropped off. But I remember coming out the timeout. I don't know if you remember this. We came out the timeout and Coach drew up a play. And in my mind, I was like, JB, you get this ball. Just yeah. take it. F this play. <laughs> yeah. You get this ball, bro. What was the like, original play co- supposed to go to? L.A. was supposed to curl as like a yep. as as a, a decoy, and okay. then JB was supposed to pop out. But I was gotcha. like, yo, I'm because he said, if L.A. is open, get him the ball. I was like, I ain't even looking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if he's booty butt, why that Sorry, we love I'm you, L.A. The ball. No, LA. L.A. is my we guy. We love you, dog. But, but come on, man. But honestly, I was like, JB. Get this ball, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. I actually thought you guys were going to foul. They had Didn't one foul to get. Yeah, yeah one foul to get. We talked about it, I think, yeah. in the timeout, right? Yeah. 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 It just I'm sure I'm sure. Happened AD, too quick, yeah. I'm sure everything AD happened. Was, was killing himself. It was the lights, that. too, man. I mean, that just that threw moment. it in a, a different type of vibe, you know? So much was going on. I, I, I can't speak for himself. I was I was on the bench. I was <laughs> yeah, when I, I grabbed his, I grabbed him. Bro, I ran after a full speed, <laughs> grabbed on the back. I was like, I love you. I love you, bro. You're my brother for life. Because that was my first chip. That was your first so was one? Like, yeah, my first one, oh. bro. My first one. And I was like, Man, I was like, I owe one. you for life. I was yeah. like, JV, I owe you for life, life, bro. Is that your first one for the pros? Yeah. Or did you get? Dang, too. that's dope. You're welcome, guys. One. See, yeah. I'm always giving you guys here on the show. I like to give. Oh, you people. gave us a lot. More I gave you guys more than anything. I gave you guys everything. How many times? How many times we beat you in the finals? Uh, two, Is two. Because I think I went over on the third. I think, yeah, I think it's twice. Yeah, we got to check you, that. It might pull, two or three. You yeah. pulled a uh, KD. I pulled a crazy. KD yeah. or who else did that? Um, that boy bounced on his team. <laughs> That was oh, crazy, man. Doug. I didn't expect that. That's another story oh, you got to talk about because I did oh, not man. expect coming to y'all's team. Just, yeah, that was, that was a That was a last-minute boss. J.D., you're on Hanever now. Yeah, that was crazy. Like, it was supposed to be on San Miguel. Hey, I always wanted to ask you. Because Jimmy was at San Miguel, Okay, right? okay. So me and Jimmy had the connection. Oh, yeah. So Jimmy was trying to get me on San Miguel. Yeah. So that was all in stone until I got into Boss Al's office and he was like you going and he's never. just like nah we got you on here never okay that's okay. how it happened <laughs> that was crazy because they put you on free agency right yeah they, uh unrestricted unrestricted but so did, did they have a conversation with you i mean so just for a whole no no, no yeah no it's yeah. cool um no no they they told me verbally that hey we're not going to do anything with you jd okay we're just letting you know we're going to put you on unrestricted but I've been here a long time. Uh, yeah. I've been here a long time. I understand how things work. I understand how the business plays out. I under I can see kind of what was going on. It was written on the wall. Yeah. So okay. that's why I, I was so quiet 
afterwards. I didn't, I wasn't trying to get anyone fired. I don't want to disrespect anyone. I was just looking out for myself. You had that leave you before you leave me. Hey, man. <laughs> Dude, I just wanted the best situation for myself. Like, I didn't want to put hate on no one. He said, she's, no, no, just, I yeah, saw what yeah. was going on. It's cool. I see you guys didn't have to do that. But, okay, that's why we're here. I get it. All right, so, uh, JB, why don't, you, why don't you take us back, man? Take us back to the college days when you were still hooping and – Apparently, there were some controversial... St. John Rutgers, right? St. Yeah, John Rutgers. Yeah. Why don't you take us down that path? What happened in that game, man? Man, so uh, <laughs> I was young, obviously, back then. <laughs> it's going to be tight. Uh, man, it was a game that uh, Rutgers, you know, they was a rivalry of St. John's. It's yeah. like Jersey, New York type yeah, of thing. Yeah. So uh, they, I remember they was, uh, in, during the regular season, we had played them always tough, and we... You know, always going back and forth with them. So we got to the Big East tournament. I think it was either the first or second round. Can't even remember. But um, we ended up playing them, and uh, we got a big stop at the end of the game to win it. Well, at, at that particular time, it, it, through my <laughs> mind, we had won the game, and the time expired. Yeah. But I think it was maybe one, maybe two seconds uh, on the clock still. Yeah. And I threw the ball up. Kind of was like celebrating, happy. And then I can remember it was like a a dull moment. And I was like, why everybody? And then the, the clock kept going and it went out. But all my teammates was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, what? We won the game. It was like, you did that. It was maybe one or two seconds still on the clock. And you stepped out of bounds and, you know, all the stuff. So I didn't realize everything. The, the garden, it got loud. So oh, this was at Madison we, Square, too. Yeah. Ooh. So once we got to stop. I just heard, ah, I didn't hear the horn. Yeah. I didn't even hear it when it actually went off. <laughs> I just threw the ball up, and I'm yelling like, yeah, whatever. And every, and I was just looking like a big dummy right in that yeah. moment. But luckily, we got the win, and we advanced in that So turn. they got the ball back? No, they didn't get it back. The, the time, the uh, scorekeeper missed it. Oh, so what they should have got it back. They should have got it back. Mm -hmm. I stepped out of bounds, threw the ball up. They should have got it back with probably, I would say, at least one or two seconds on uh, the clock. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was an embarrassing moment, but luckily it didn't go. It could have been way worse. Oh, yeah. yeah. If they would have got the ball back and hit a three or something to beat yeah. y'all, you would have you been done so. <laughs> but they were so mad. I think the next game we paid for it, though, because we didn't get no calls. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because the refs missed the call, right? Yep. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you said you was young. You was... I mean that's that's it's actually a high IQ play if you don't step out. If I don't step yeah, out, yeah, if you don't step yeah. out of bounds, it's a high IQ play. You throw it to up, throw it up. Yeah, by One the time second. they get it, they, I don't know if their timeout situation, but yeah, yeah. Okay. But I look like a dummy in that. <laughs> we all we all had. Yeah, I remember hearing. It, I remember from. hearing about that. That dude from uh, St. John's that threw the ball up when there was still time. Yeah, <laughs> I remember hearing about that. Okay. Um, man, I want to get back on track with just Hanebra, man, because I know a lot of our viewers, they want to hear about just your vibes and your experience at Hanebra. And I think one thing I, I mean, I want to know about was every year you kept coming back to play here in the Philippines, you know, and as your status grew, the more championships you're winning, I'm sure you had more opportunities to play around the world at different places, maybe even for more money. Like, what? Man, what kept you just wanting to keep coming back to the Philippines and, and, and still stay hooping out here? Man, it was uh, a lot of things, you know, uh, from the team, from the teammates, you yeah. know, from the actual, you know, and never as a whole. Yeah, y'all had a know. great squad, man. Like, just man. everyone was cool as, cool as anything, right? Yeah, everybody was cool. Cool as hell. Know? And I don't been to other countries where the language barrier was tough to deal with. Mm -hmm. And um, Europe... Uh, France, my coach, he spoke English, but uh, Italy, mm -hmm. he didn't speak no English. Right. <laughs> so that was kind of tough having a coach. And in Mexico as well, I experienced that as well. But that was tough. But uh, just, you know, uh, the bosses, they take care of the players. You know, uh, Coach Tim, mm -hmm. teammates like you guys, mm -hmm. you know, um, I can really just kind of be myself, you know. Yeah. And, um, of course, the fans. You know, yeah. you, can't, you can't forget about the fans and the people who support basketball yeah. here. It's, it's definitely special the way they, you know, you'll come to practice almost every day and get gifts or, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know, um, the fans want to take pictures, want you to sign stuff, and mm-hmm. they was just, you know, uh, just very it was every all around, man. It was great, you know, great experience. Yeah, man. So have you have you ever experienced fans like this in any other country that you played in? Uh, How was Lebanon? Because I heard Lebanon's pretty pretty. Lebanon is intense. <laughs> the fans are pretty intense. It's almost like you're going into a war. You know, when you not necessarily like, okay, uh, I don't want to say the wrong thing, you know, and offend any anybody or any yeah, country, yeah. but the way it's it's so intense, the way the fans, you know, um, cheer for you in the game, you know, um, they the Philippines appreciate basketball, you know, the way it is, and they are cheer even if like we play for a never, and if a player from another team make a good move. Yeah. Even the never fans are cheer for that or yeah, like you know applaud sense. that because it's a good move they appreciate mm-hmm. basketball mm-hmm. and that's a great thing. Um, but in Lebanon, it's not if you yeah. can make a good move on a team and you know, you know they, no they booing you and you know, <laughs> you know doing all the stuff, you're not getting no love. So, um, that's the biggest difference. But they do, they are passionate, they love basketball there in Lebanon, but um. The appreciation for the Philippines or basketball is just like un, 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 no yeah. other, no other. Yeah. So being out here so long, what's your, what's your, would you say your favorite part about the Philippines out here? The Filipino pride. You know, you can whether it's uh, the music, whether it's um, the food, um, whether it's something they enjoy doing. You know, uh, the pride of a Filipino. Um, it's so great. You know, I really admire because you know, like. Number one, you guys, nothing can knock a Filipino down, uh, and right. or if he get knocked right. down, he's gonna get up. You know, he's gonna <laughs> nice. he's tough. gonna fight. He's gonna be tough. You know, and all the things. And that's something I really admire. When it comes to, you know, the culture, it's so proper. Like when it, it's just when a Filipino, like what, what's your nationality? And a Filipino, you hear him say, "I'm Filipino." You know, it's like mm-hmm. their chest is out. They said yeah. real, real pride. pride. Yeah. And um, that's something I admire. You know, because. You know, you gotta be prideful of where you come from, and you know, your you can what you say is your own. So I really admire that Filipino pride. <laughs> Would you say you uh, you picked up any tiny Filipino mannerisms or traits? You know, like like Joe always goes like like hi, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you so ing out so much. Or <laughs> you gotta have something, dog. Uh, you, any type of random for Filipino sure. The oi, like you know, oi. Uh, <laughs> oi. <laughs> oi. when you get fouled. <laughs> oi. <laughs> I find myself doing that sometimes. Oh, really? Uh, okay. <laughs> what else can I say? Uh, uh, that's well, that's one of the main ones. But yeah. I seen you point with your lips a few times. Point? You be oh, pointing yeah. with your uh, lips? Yeah, 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 you like, you point with your lips. Or this one here. This yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I, find, I go back to the States and I do that. They be like, what, what are you, you doing, doing man? man? That's dope, man. I mean, you, you are, you're a Filipino now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. straight like, up. Like, straight up, you were a Filipino. And, and that's crazy to think about, like, just you talking about your first time out here signing for a month. Yeah. And now you're a Filipino <laughs> dog representing the Philippines in these games and stuff. C- can you talk about um, them picking JC, uh, Jordan Clarkson, to play in the World Cup? Did you have any type of feeling about that o- over you? Not really a feeling. I mean, obviously, of course, like playing in the World Cup would be yeah. a great deal you know, for anybody, a great opportunity for anybody. And that was something that, you know, uh, I was definitely, you know, uh, uh, I guess you could say looking forward to or, yeah. or wanted the opportunity. And I was, you know, provided the opportunity, you know. But, you know, obviously J.C., come on, man. He's an NBA vet now, you know, uh, uh, one of the top players in the world, top 20 or 25 players in the world. So, <clears throat> you man, know. Uh, that's high. He nice. But he not, well, when it come, well, I can say when it comes to scoring a, uh, oh, basketball oh, offensively, yeah. he's definitely one of the best scorers in the world, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, yeah. and I think he can um, bring such great help. But for me, you know, when I came to the Gillis program, it was just all about helping the team any way I can. You mm-hmm. know, whether if it was to see a games or the world games or just practicing. You mm-hmm. know, and you know, um, and I take pride in that. You know, and that's an honor. You know, to do that, yeah, you know, definitely. and I'm great. I'm greatly appreciative of, of that opportunity. So just in that, you know, yeah, it may have stung a little bit, but at the same time, you know, I'm still, you know, uh, here to support mm-hmm. Gilles and, 
you know, um, I'm I'm thinking I'm always thinking about the bigger picture for Givas, you yeah. know. So that's dope, man. You understand like you really you really wear that Filipino pride. That's that's that right there, just that sacrifice, bro, to be like, yo, I understand and I'm gonna still be there if you want me to get in practice and bust his ass a couple times. <laughs> oh man, I ain't gonna <laughs> say that. I ain't gonna hey. say that. No, but I mean you would though. Like you would go into practice oh, yeah, and, and go out. You know yeah. Like, yeah, it's dope, bro. For sure. Man, I think it's so cool, Jay, that you know, for one People that don't get to experience being on the national team, it's hard to explain what that feeling feels yeah. like. You know, we've all had a chance to be on the national team at one point in our careers, and it's such a powerful feeling of just privilege and honor. Absolutely. Um, best feeling in the world. But, you know, your, your stint so far on the national team, take us back a little bit, man, for the SEA Games okay. and your experience through that because you guys had a little – little bump in the road, right? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, you, you <laughs> yeah. lost the game a little early mm -hmm. yeah. and you you kind of had to come back and you really had to like put it out there, dog. And man. when you did, man, you went you went crazy. You man. guys lost man. to that, that, Cambodia. that dickhead coach, right? With, yeah. yeah, yeah. That dude was a God was a knucklehead, <laughs> <Yeah>. bro. Knucklehead. <laughs> yeah. But but man, tell us about how that went down. Like, that, I know they had like eight imports or something. Something right. Stupid they like that. They somewhere. weren't Cambodian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. <I'll tell> <laughs> yeah, they definitely wasn't. Uh, yeah, but take us back to that tournament, man. But yeah, Cambodia, that was a great experience, man. Mm -hmm. Definitely enjoyed, you know, playing in the sea games, getting the goal. Uh, but man, it was hot. It was hot was and humid it? out there. They didn't have no air guns. Christian was with you too, my Christian, guy Christian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know Christian, he was going yeah. off. The court bro. was messed up. The like, court was yeah. like, a, they rolled the layer. It wasn't like a. It's like wood laminate. Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. yeah, right? Something just like that. Just laid it out, and yeah. it was just Awful. like floor mats or something, you know, like a big floor <laughs> mat. That's crazy. But, uh, <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, so with that, you know, uh, but other than that, you know, other than that and the heat, you know, just being around the team, going there, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, we lost that first game against Cambodia, and, yeah, the coach, yeah. big head. Did that, for, did that fuel y'all? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. We went to yeah. the locker room and everybody like Coach Short, Coach Tim, mm -hmm. every the whole coaching staff, we was in the locker room just like He yeah. poked a bear. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he poked a bear. That's dope. <laughs> and it was it was definitely motivating and that, that fueled us. That united y'all a little bit, right? Yep. Yeah. Because yep. I saw so, that. Like a little something something flipped. Yep. Especially when y'all played them the next time. Some some there was a trigger that just was like, okay, you poked a bear, we're gonna come together as a team and, and come after you that's exactly what it was you turned up a little bit too I was. yeah I, I was dealing with that heat man it was tough the first couple games it was tough i was uh getting dehydrated mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. uh they said i was showing signs of uh uh what is it heat stroke or overheating <sighs> what especially with you there's something wrong with you bro like <laughs> you nah this dude people don't know like this dude would get an iv a straight yeah. up IV before yeah. our games because yeah. we didn't want them to cramp up. Yeah, it's still, like, cramp. It's still cramp. I was like, yo, something wrong with this dude's body, bro. Like, they did everything. He's playing for like him. Superman. That's why he's Superman in a human body. You know <laughs> that's saying? crazy, bro. That was that, that he was his kryptonite then. Yeah. <laughs> for real. That boy be sweating. We would have to practice some of our shorts would be like mm -hmm. you could wring them out with sweat, bro. It was Man, crazy, crazy, bro. That's how it was for sure. I thought I sweat a lot, but man, just being in Gilas, I seen how Jumar sweat. Yo, we could be in the warm up. After the warm up, he's taking his jersey off. And ringing it's it out. It's a waterfall. It's, <sighs> it was crazy. I, I thought I sweat a lot, but I don't sweat nearly as much as Jumar. Yeah. That's wild. That man. says something. Yeah. <laughs> because you, you, that's crazy because he don't cramp though. He don't cramp so though. There's yeah. really something wrong with you. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Have what you it ever is. got that check? <laughs> they actually did some tests. Uh, they just, just thought I was low, uh, low magnesium and potassium, uh, yeah, stuff like probably, that. Yeah, potassium for sure. Yeah. Giants. Hey, so, um, you know, you, you are now representing the Philippines, um, naturalized as, as a Filipino, and I know you hold that very dear to your heart. You hold that Filipino pride. Um, I've seen your son, Justin, yep. out here, and, and I've seen you putting him through drills and all that. Oh, yeah. uh, he looks like he got some got some skill. He's and I killer, remember bro. him when he was just, what, four or five years old <laughs> running around, man. Yep. And uh, now he's he's actually developing skill. You see you working on him. Is it something that interests you to 
get him, he's 11 now, right? To get him his Filipino passport or some way to get him his Filipino passport um, before he's 16 so he could have the opportunity to represent the country? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the idea was presented to me. Um, Josh, actually, uh, he, he said something to me in practice one day, and uh, Justin was there, and he seen him playing. It was like, uh, what you think about, you know, the idea of that, getting him, getting him a passport, and maybe he could play for the national team and yeah. so forth. And, man, I'm like, I'm all for it. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I do want him to get to a point in the age where, you know, he make that decision where he really want to – He's, he's made the decisions to commit to basketball, but to be able to make those type of decisions, yeah, and be like, yeah, yeah I wouldn't mind, sick. you know, um, but I would definitely proceed, you know, and then later on and see how he feel about it, for sure. Yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah, like, that'd be sick. And be a, be a big star in the NBA, and then, man, you know I hope saying, so. those Filipino <laughs> roots, and then they get this story about, you know, his pops being out here, a legend, you coaching and ever by that time. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wait, 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 we can, we can add another layer on it. Let's say Jimmy turns head coach at SAC, drafts his son. He oh, so he's on Sacramento right. now. You know what I'm saying? We're all going to SAC games. Hey, Yo, hey that would be well, sick. Honestly, the inverse works crazy, bro. Like, that that would be wild. Oh, but there's a lot of... There's a lot of connected dots, bro, of Philippine basketball Facts. connected with the states and the NBA, hey, and we're starting to, to come up. Shout out Jimmy. Jimmy. Um, he just Shout out, man. Congrats, sure, man. Shout out Jimmy. For, for, sure. for the Sacramento Kings, yep. our, our team. You know, I'm part of that team, too. <laughs> um, player <laughs> development coach. But, but yeah, man, that would be, that would That'd be, be dope. A, a story. Yeah. That would be man. dope. That would be tight. Does that interest you to be a coach? For sure. I yeah. definitely uh, definitely would like to. I mean, I, I know it comes with a lot of experience. And, mm -hmm. you know, of course, over the years playing basketball, you got a lot of experience. But it's a different type of uh, outlook. You know, it's about mm -hmm. managing. You got to manage. You mm -hmm. got to do more than just yeah. know basketball. So yeah, that's, that's, fun with. that's one thing about Coach Tim, bro, is, is I tell people all the time, is this guy is a master chemistry coach. Yeah. yeah. Like X and O's, yeah, he, he's very detail-oriented. But when it comes to bringing a team together to battle for each other and be on the same page, that guy is bar none the best. Like he really can get guys to come in and believe in one system and one belief all together. Yeah, um, facts. So you running the triangle or continuity? What you what you running? He runs the JB oh, offense. Yeah, we go, uh, I don't know. I definitely uh, would try to take some things. I don't want to be just like, you know, uh, Coach Tim, but I definitely would take – a whole ton of stuff, you know, like mm -hmm. it definitely is detail, attention to detail stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, the way he, um, what do he call it? His, um, what do, I'm looking for the word, the, the things that coaches have and that's their own, their philosophy. Philosophy. Yeah, philosophy. Yeah. Philosophies. Philosophies, yeah. So his, a lot of his philosophies I would definitely take oh, yeah. for sure, 100%. Yeah. People don't understand this about Coach Tim is like he's a, he's a very defensive minded coach. Yeah. A lot of people think like, oh, when they think of him, triangle offense, and he's been successful with the triangle offense. Honestly, when we won our first championship or after that, we were running continuity, which was Coach Kirk's uh, uh, inf influence into the triangle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They kind of meshed it, and that's when we became really successful. But Coach Tim's specialty is his defensive philosophy getting everybody in it, the way he schemes yeah. guys in the playoffs and his his where he gets us ready to... Where to, you get back on defense. Nah, remember, yeah. remember his his whole little thing that he quizzes everyone, like, stay low, see the ball, oh, man, yeah. the ball. Yeah, all that. Right. The five that? No, e what is it? Five like fundamentals? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then ELC, early loud con yep, continuous yeah, talking. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That's like, those are, those are the things for me, because I've played for, you know, everyone knows, I've been traded hella times. i played for a lot of coaches. I'm telling you right now, those detailed things of... Coaches yeah. demanding players to talk on defense, it being matters. there and help side, dropping, flowing down with the ball, stuff like that. Sprinting back on defense when the ball goes up, we're not we're not trying to foul to mm -hmm. to get an advantage, you know, because because he thinks big picture for the for the end game. Now you're in the penalty because you fouled early in the quarter to stop a fast break. Mm -hmm. No, sprint your ass back into the paint and then go out. Those are the type of things that they aren't. These coaches, other coaches, that's what separates why he's the winningest coach in the league, bro. So if you're going to do that, you could hire me as your assistant. We'd be a nice We'd win 27 championships, huh? Yeah. Go after his record. That would be crazy. You could be like the Norman Black out here, bro. Norman Black 2.0.
that's yeah. definitely somebody you know I gained some inspiration from somebody yeah. like that uh, guys like um, um, I can't think of his name Ray Parks Ray Parks for sure it was a guy you remember you hooked that so uh, what's his <sighs> name he with, played with you in Talker Takes. He got the one that got shot in the back of the Ali Peak. Ali Peak. Ali Peak, yeah. You know, guys yeah. like that for sure. So mm-hmm. they've been around in the Philippines for, for years, years now. Man. So yep. you know, I definitely that's definitely something I would like to, you know, go after. Yeah. Well. So Shout when you done when you're done playing, do you see yourself now that you're you are naturalized out here, do you do you see yourself living out here? Like whether it's full time, part time, whatever, like is this home to you? Has this for became sure. home? For sure. I mean, I definitely think I always probably be back and forth a little bit from the states and here, um, but for sure, this is home now. For sure, that's dope. So you're not just out here just because of your job. Like you out here because this is this is where you like to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You like to be in them shadows and bright. <laughs> <laughs> <It's too bad. laughs> okay. Yeah, you, man. You. I mean, I, I like to you know give people their flowers, especially if I if I if I know them. You know, I gave Joe his flowers on his episode, and I want to give you your flowers, man. Opportunity to give you your flowers. Um, me and you, we we've been we've been bumping at the gun since you got on the team, man. You know what I'm saying? And all those times of me, you, Joe, and Coach Kirk talking shit to each other, me locking you up in practice, you know, making hold on, hold on, you the making you the player that you are. <laughs> nah, but but all jokes aside, man, like you became my brother. Like we won those championships together, went to war together. Um, you really became my brother. I see the father that you are. You've inspired me, um, obviously, with my kids. Um, but, man, just thank you for, for being not just a great player that you are, but the great person mm-hmm. that you are, bro. Like, you, you're a real rarity. Like, I've seen tons of imports come out here and not want to get along with their teammates, act mm-hmm. like they better than them. Like, you'll go, you'll go eat with the last person on the bench, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you are an amazing friend teammate and person bro and that and that says a lot about you so man just thank you for for who you are bro thank love you, you man i love you too hey, that was bro. dope all right well that's what's up man uh i think being said with that this last question jay we wanted to ask you this we actually ask everyone this question before they they leave the show and it just goes like this if you could change one thing in this world if you had the power to change something in this world, what would it, what would you change it? That's a tough one, but I guess if I could say hate, like, you know, hate. Mm. Just be kind. Just be kind, yeah. you know, and, and love, you know, because yeah. that's what I'm all about, yeah. you know. Um, you know, just love and not hate, you know. Peace, peace. Love, real yeah. peace. Kill him with kindness, man. <laughs> I love, love that. I love that. That's cool. Who would be someone that you would want to have on our show? Who would you recommend to throw out an assist to? That we could have our as our next guest. Even though you don't pass too much. Yeah, this is going to be your only assist. <laughs> but you oh, you going to assist us on this one. Yeah. Maybe Scotty? That's a good yeah, one, bro. that's a great one. Scotty, yeah. you got to come on, man. We're going to come after you now. J- JB said JB so. He's going to help us. He's going to try. You're going to get him his first assist. Here you go. All right, y'all. Appreciate hey, man, you, guys, appreciate you having you, man. To wrap this up, we we, with all our guests, you know, me and you will get our shots up before and after practice, right? So imagine a court around the arc. We call it Let It Fly segment, okay. right? And this is just rapid fire. Let it fly, bro. Catch and shoot, muscle memory. Catch and shoot. So we're going to give you 10 questions. You're going to start in the corner, go wing, top of the key, wing, in another corner, okay? Ten, okay. ten, ten shots. All it. right? So we're going we're gonna to shoot them to you. And, uh, Do I have a time limit or just quick? You trying to you trying to get it quick, bro? Okay. See, so yeah, we can get the quickest, I guess. We can yeah, go. Yeah, we gonna that. time you, and then and then you competing against these other guests. You trying to get them? Man, man. <laughs> okay, okay. Is it a cash prize? Did you get something something for this, or maybe <laughs> yeah, some yeah, Bitcoin? Get, or something? Get I'll give something, you some something. Bitcoin, Jay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, JB. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start it off. You ready? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Um, favorite Filipino food? Chicken adobo. Ooh. If you're not hooping, what would you be doing instead? That was a good one. <laughs> you're already behind. You're already behind. Uh, uh, culture. Okay. Favorite place in the world? Philippines. Favorite all-time shoe? Jordan 1. All right. Favorite teammate? Come on now, rapid fire. Let's go. <laughs> you messed this Come up, Jay. <laughs> Whoever played for it, never. 
That was weak. Teammate. <laughs> teammate. I'm going to do it again. Favorite teammate. Oh, my God. That's a tough one, man. I can't say one. I can't say one on that one. Dog, I gave you that Rolex you, on your Fade away. Fade away. Fade away. Fade away. Favorite Tagalog word. Oi. 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 Okay. Is it really? Baby I would All say right. so. All right. Toughest matchup. Mm. Durham. Yeah. Mm. You monster. Yeah, you didn't even guard him. Me and Joe guard him. I mean, it's my turn. That's why I didn't guard him. That's why I didn't guard him. It's his question. That's why I didn't guard him. Favorite all time car? Uh, Mercedes uh, S550. Mm. Okay. You can't fade away this one. Game on the line, dying seconds, you get triple team. You passing it out to JD, me, or Joe. Who you passing it to? For a mm. three. For a three? JDV. <laughs> yeah, I knew he was going to say that because he's not here. Joe, don't you yeah. don't take that for nothing. It's because you ain't here, Off Jay. Off camera, he already said me. He already said me. Here. Yeah. Because I yeah. He's going to swing. He's going to flip it as soon as we cut this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, but hey, Jay, you know, thanks for sharing your time and energy with us. It's always so much fun just chopping it up with you, man. Man, thanks um, for having me, man. I, I hope your ankle heals up real fast. Because, you know, you got to bring us to another chip soon in October. Oh, right? yeah, we back. We back for sure. For sure. We're, we're going to try. But, uh, sure. man, we appreciate you. We love you, man. Appreciate you, man. Um, and tune in for our next episode. This is another Let It Fly. Peace out, everyone. Stay out of shadows. Stay out of shadows. Stay out of shadows. <laughs> Stay out of shadows. <laughs>